Let your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God and in me. Good afternoon, everyone. This is 287. And to those of you who keep the Sabbath, I hope you're having a happy and blessed Sabbath. Now, today's study is focused on um, death. Um, a lot of people don't acknowledge it. Most people have issues with it when someone dies, um, family, friends, loved one, whomever. Um, but I'm here to tell you people, recognize that it's a real experience and it's going to happen to you as an individual. Now, granted, very few will not see death physically. There will be some that translate directly into that glorified body that scripture speaks about. But most of us will at least suffer the first physical death. Now, the thing to keep in mind is what we need to be focused on is our spiritual life and not die spiritually into sin. That is what it's all about. This physical thing is temporary no matter how you look at it. It's going to change. So focus on your spiritual well-being and not so much on not being able to deal or cope with death or even acknowledge it. But anyway, with that being said, let's get started with the death experience. Now, Ecclesiastes 9.5 in part tells us that for the living know that they shall die. And I'm here to tell you, at least the living should know that they're going to die. Everyone should know that they're going to die. But to follow on in that scripture says, but the dead know not anything. And that's true. Dead people know nothing. When those who are dead are raised, they're not going to even realize how much time has went by. It's as if they were asleep. In fact, scripture even refers to death as sleep because that's what it is. You are in a physical and spiritual sleep. Nothing is going on. Now, Ecclesiastes 7.1 says that a good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death better than the day of one's birth. Now, Proverbs 22.1 follows and says, a good name rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. So what it's saying is that it is better to have favor in the Lord than have, once again, things, silver and gold. A, a good name rather to be chosen, a, a name that is going to be chosen for you in the kingdom. These things are better to have than the things that people focus on, which is always stuff, money and things. Remember that. Focus on the Father. All this stuff is temporal. Now, Mark 13, 7 and Luke 21, 9 speak upon wars and rumors of wars. Now, this is where the death experience, this subject I'm speaking about, is important because we have to understand, especially as people in this country, the USA, you have to understand that these things that we see going on in all these other countries, wars, rumors of wars, more wars, all these things are coming here in a neighborhood near you soon. Now, you may not be able to perceive that and it may not happen today or tomorrow, but it's coming. Scripture tells us that these things have to come to pass and this country is not going to be excluded. It may be the last country involved in this type of um, civil wars and all these things, but it's coming. And once it starts, it's going to be no different than all the atrocities that we see in all the other countries. So, Mark 24, 6 and 8 says that we are to, one, not be troubled. These things, like I said, must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Just like in all these other countries, all these wars and stuff they've been having for years and years, the end wasn't yet when they started. So they're still continuing 
and it hasn't even got to this country yet. But once it gets here, it's going to be the same thing. That even that isn't even going to be the end. Now, in verse seven, it's told we're told that nations will rise up against each other. We see it all around the world, and it's going to be the same here. We're going to be up against other nations. Other nations are going to be up against us. There are going to be civil wars, all sorts of atrocity. And then in verse 8, as Matthew 24, verse 8, it says, These things are the beginning of sorrows, or the um, pains of a woman in travail, or sorrows. That's basically what it's saying. These are the beginning of sorrows, and miseries, and mourning, and just all these horrible things that we only see from this country looking at other countries through the news and all this other media you have to prepare yourself and I'm not talking physically because we're gonna be who we're gonna be physically as an individual and as a nation but you have to be ready spiritually now Luke 21 9 through 12 reads but when ye shall hear of wars and commotions be not terrified for these things must first come to pass but the end is not by and by these things are gonna have to happen to fulfill his will. Verse 10, Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. 11, And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. All these things have to happen. There's gonna be a succession of all these things happening. But the first thing you notice that we're told in verse 9 is to not be terrified so how can you not be terrified when all these things are going on there's wars around you earthquakes and all this stuff going on this is where we have to be spiritually grounded so that we can find comfort in the Heavenly Father if we're not spiritually grounded we are going to be all these things and it's going to take us out of his will now the last part of verse 12 reads, For my name's sake. The Savior says that all these things must come to pass, must happen. And he also says not to be terrified. For my name's sake. Now, in 1 Peter 2, 13 and 14, verse 13 reads, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to a king as supreme, verse 14, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. So, we're told to do whatever we are ordered to do by kings, governors, whatever. By the leaders is simply what it's saying. By those who are in charge, governments, police, military, what have you. Do whatever it is for his name's sake. Whether they come to uh, harm evildoers or even those that are to do good. We're to find comfort in him. We're to let these things happen. We're to obey because there is a plan in all this that we are to be a part of. And we have to follow his word or we're going to be left out. We may as well just go the wicked way. Because if we don't have the faith and trust in Him, we're going to be lost. So we have to trust His Word and do what it tells us to do. So when all these things happen, obey. Like I said, these bodies are temporal. These physical bodies are temporal. If you die righteously, you're going to be risen. If you resist all this because you're so bent on hanging on to the world, you're not doing His will. Remember, there have been plenty over the course of history that have died for his name's sake and they're going to be in heaven remember individuals like Stephen remember when the Savior came down himself the things that happened to him he was beaten imprisoned hated despised everything and ultimately he was murdered a lot of us are going to meet the same fate if we can't go through the same things that he went through and he commands us to do it for his name's sake then we are no different than the rest of the world. We're hanging on to the world. Put these things in your mind. We have to. We have to educate ourselves and understand what it's all about. Now, ultimately, it comes down to this. Luke 21, 13 reads, And it shall turn to you for a testimony. 
we go through all this for a testimony. And Philippians 1.28 says, And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, but to you of salvation. So don't let the potential uh, terror caused by our enemy, which may include death, be, be a deterrent for us. Look to it as salvation. That's what we should be reaching to so that we may be um, counted worthy of the kingdom for which he also suffered. That's 2 Thessalonians 1 5. He suffered. We should be willing to do the same. We have to find ourselves worthy by going through what he went through. Now, those of us which are alive when these things start here, look up to him in obedience and faith and let him work through us. Always be willing to let this worldly stuff go. Work on yourself spiritually and be looking up toward the heavens. As it is, it's not going to change. The Father's plan is going to carry through. So look up to Him to get us through whatever it is. With that being said, the Heavenly Father doesn't call on us to be successful. He calls on us to be faithful and obedient and loving to one another as we love Him and love ourselves. This is 2 Bay 7. I'm out.